What's going on, my horror friends? This is Tommy Knocker, the Horror Guy, coming at you. And today, I'm doing a top 10 list. Top 10 most annoying characters in horror movies. Yeah, so these are the these are the characters that, yeah, annoy me. But they're not the ones that are the jerks of the movies. You know what I mean? It's, it's not going to be that kind of category. It's not the jerks in the movie. It's not the ones that are purposely there to piss you off. These are the most unlikely characters that piss you off. They're supposed to be the, some of these, not all of them, are supposed to be the protagonists or the good characters, but you just can't stand them and you want their demise. <laughs> um, so some of these could be controversial. I would like to hear your, what characters in horror irritate the shit out of you? And I try to keep this, um, I really could have easily picked 10 kids from this. I am not a fan of kids in horror movies. They drive me nuts. So I tried to limit that. I only have a few, a couple. I think I did pretty good. Um, I did some last minute adjustments. Uh, I had a lot. So I'm not going to do honorable mentions for this. There's too many to mention. <laughs> yeah, there's too many to mention. And then I tried to um, make it too many franchise heavy. Like, I could have had a lot for Friday the 13th. I could have had a lot for Halloween. I could have had a lot more for Nightmare on Elm Street, blah, 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 blah. No, I wanted to spread it out a little bit. There might be a couple repeats here and there, but... Okay, so here we go. My top 10 most annoying characters in horror. Again, this is just my opinion, what drives me nuts. Here we go. Number 10. Okay, so he's a beloved character in the Friday the 13th franchise. I get it. I get why he is. Um, but why I go back and rewatch this... I can't stand him. I mean, because I always picture having that friend. Can you imagine going to a camp area with your friend and there's there's girls that you're trying to impress and you're trying to hook him up. You're trying to be a friend. You're trying to hook him up. And he acts like that. You know what I mean? Uh, my number 10 is Shelly. Yes, Shelly from Friday the 13th Part 3. Just He's one of those guys that if he was your friend, he, you know, you're like, oh, that's Shelly for you. That's our friend Shelly. We have to put up with him. No, you know, no matter what he does, we have to put up with him. It just it would have got old quick, you know, especially around us. That's fine. But when you're doing this around girls, women, actually, I mean, look at that. Look at Vera. That's a woman. And he's acting like that in front of her. Yeah, no, I get it. You're going to be yourself. That trope. Sure. But Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, when he's like constantly putting himself down, like, well... When you look like this, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to fuck me. Oh, golly gee, Whitakers. I mean, it just got old. If he was my friend, I'd be like, dude, you're ruining this for me. <sighs> I'm a shitty friend, what can I say? But yeah, Shelly, man, from Friday 13 Part 3. Yeah, when Jason got his mask from him, he did serve a purpose. We got the mask from Shelly. So he did do a good deed. But his character, man, I'm sorry. Annoying. It was always the typical, the first like three movies or four, there was always the jokester, always playing the jokes, like he was dead, he's not dead, and then he's going to end up dead for life. It's not a fan of Shelly. Sorry, guys. Coming in next at number nine, I feel bad for putting her, but when you go back and watch this, I just don't see her that believable as a, not just a girlfriend in high school, but just like... Just like this, like, of all the women that he could have, he was, um, the vampire wanted her. I get it. She looked like his ex-love. I get that. But, like, I don't know. I couldn't buy her in the role. It's just her voice also is very, uh, very annoying to me. My number nine is from Fright Night. Amy. Yeah, Amy. I liked, uh, Charlie's girlfriend way more in Fright Night 2. That's the kind of girlfriend I could kind of see him with. I mean, Charlie's dorky, too, in his own way, but... Amanda Beers from Married with Children. I just see her as the neighbor from Married with Children when I watch this movie. Something about her, her, she just looks more like a housewife, an older housewife. She looks too old for that role, too old for him. They're probably the same age in real life too, but I don't know what it is about Amanda Beers in, um, in that role, but she drove me nuts. <laughs> she drove me absolutely crazy. I, I don't know what it is, but yeah. So I'm going to put Amy from Fright Night absolutely uh next coming in at number eight okay so this is the probably the first like real jerk of the movie of, of the list like some of these guys they're they're protagonists in a way or they're, they're just kids they're just there but this one's a, a jerk but the other ones the other ones piss me off just as much okay so i'm gonna go with number eight i'm going from jaws 2 jaws 2 i'm going with mayor vaughn 
in that board, that committee there that fired Brody. Okay, so more for so and Jaws too, because they've already been through this. They already know what Brody's been, what he's been through. You know what I mean? In Jaws two, in the first Jaws. So in Jaws two, there's suspicion. There's a killer whale on your beach shore. A killer whale with bite marks, holes in him. And you're having a tough time processing that Brody could think this could be a shark attack. And you just want money. You know, it's the 4th of July holiday. We all get it. It's the same plot in the first one. They want money for the town, blah, 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 blah. But that committee, they're, like, they're looking at the pictures and they're like, what is it? It's seaweed? I see seaweed. What, what's this? Just knowing a few years ago of the shark attack that happened in that town, how many people died? A little kid died? Did they, did they just forget that? So it pisses me off. You know, Mayor Vaughn, he's got a he's got a role to play. I get it, but everybody else in that committee, that board, that end up firing Brody. Look, seriously, dude, fuck off. Those guys annoy the shit out of me. But they, that's their role. That's what they were supposed to do. Poor Brody. Do you think he get his job back after saving the day again in Jaws two? Did he get his job back as chief? I would imagine so, because I know Jaws 3, they talk about them, it's, they're older, the, the boys are older, but, by the way, speaking of Jaws 2, I gotta give a uh, rest in peace to the kid who played Michael, I believe, one of Brody's sons, the little one, he, the actor, um, I believe his name is Mark Gilspin, his, his sister is Roz from, um, she played Roz in Frasier, he just passed away, yeah, very young guy, 56, so rest in peace, I had to bring that up because I'm mentioning Jaws 2, so. Rest in peace, Mark. Damn, that sucks. Okay, next. Coming in at number seven. I don't know why. I don't remember the circumstances, but I ended up watching this movie three times at the movie theater. Three times. That's the only time I've ever watched a movie that many times in a theater. Three times. There was a lot of movies when I was a kid that I saw twice. I'd go back again and watch it again. I, I, I don't know why I watched this movie three times, and it was my least favorite of the franchise. I, so I'm trying to remember the circumstances why I end up watching this three times at the movie theater. But anyway, the movie is Saw 7, Saw 3D. And the character that I'm referring to that was one of the most annoying characters was Officer Gibson. I don't know what what kind of performance he was trying to put in. And this is the kid who played in Final Destination. He was his friend. Remember the, the first one to die in the, in the bathtub? He got strangled. I don't know what kind of role he was going in. It was like he was trying to do like this old 1920s, 30s, 40s detective thing with his voice. He was almost trying. He was almost trying to sound like Christopher Bale. Sorry, Christian Bale from Batman. I don't know what he was trying to do. He was calling uh, John Kramer's wife all through the movie like names, like hey, "Come on, crazy, you're crazy." And he talked like this all the way through the movie. Yeah, and nobody cared about him. He wasn't like this main character. Nobody gave a fucking shit about him. Cops don't last in these movies. So they gave him uh, another little plot. A cop. It's it, it, Saw 7 was so bad. I can't remember. I, I don't know why I saw this three times. Seven, Saw 7 was the worst of the franchise, I thought. Um, I'm excited for Saw X. John Kramer's coming back. You know, Amanda's coming back. I'm, I'm pumped for that. But Jesus Christ, Saw 7 was rough. And this guy made it really bad one of the worst characters in the franchise really bad acting just overdone terrible watch if you don't believe me watch his performance and they tried to make him like him they tried to make us like this guy i mean and they tried everything but nothing nothing worked okay coming in next to number six another annoying character that got on my fucking nerves uh, I did not mind Rob Zombie's remakes. I didn't mind them. Even the Halloween 2 with the weird ghost, or the weird uh, ghost, the horse, all that shit. Don't care. It was okay. I, I can put it in and have fun with it. I don't I don't hate those movies. I never have. But, but I, there's one thing I always keep going back to. The annoying character that I'm talking about is young Michael Myers from the first Halloween 2007. That Michael... I thought it was a really bad choice. It's nothing against the kid. The kid was a fine actor. He did his thing, I guess. But as far as choosing that actor to play Michael Myers, I'm not buying it. Like I never, I've never bought it. Now that they, they did their own thing, Rob Zombie did his own thing. But like in the like the original Halloween, when we saw the way he looks, in Halloween Two, when he's looking out the window, and you see that flashback, and he looks back at Laurie, and that. And she's having that vision. That's Michael Myers to me. That's what I picture Michael Myers looking like. 
um even in h2o or was it resurrection i think it was yeah it was resurrection the beginning of the credits the credits are rolling they're showing an old film of the myers and they show michael myers as a kid in his eyes the way he looks that's even better than what we got the the member of hansen like that blonde haired kid and we they made us feel sorry for him they did like right away you felt sorry for michael myers his family life sucked he was being bullied at school nobody uh he didn't he didn't have any friends why are we feeling sorry for michael myers what are you doing like and they just could have picked any other kid but this i just this was not michael myers to me when i close my eyes and picture michael myers as a kid i don't picture that fucking kid i just don't uh bad choice Okay, another kid that got on my goddamn nerves, but not as much because, well, this is a movie that I've only seen maybe once or twice, and I won't watch it again because of this one kid. It's an Italian horror movie, The House by the Cemetery, and you know I'm talking about. I'm talking about that freaking little kid named Bob. Yeah, Bob. Okay, here's about 40 seconds or so of some of Bob's lines. You're trying to get through a movie. And you have this dialogue from this kid. Here it is. That's that's Bob. That's that's Bob. That's that's him all through the movie. It's nonstop. You're like, who is the who is the uh, who is the antagonist in this movie? Is it the ghost? Is it the killer? Is it this kid? This kid. This kid is more deadly than Chucky. Just this listening to two minutes of his dialogue puts you over the edge genius move but guys bob this kid and i don't really like ho italian horror movies anyway so the dubbing is it's already off-putting as it is when you get this kid it makes it rough it makes it such a rough watch coming in next at number four as a tandem i'm putting them together i never liked these movies people always give scream credit the first scream i love i, I do but they're like well they really brought back the genre it did, but it also brought back some shit, too. A lot of copycats of Scream. A lot of those WB Network teeny bopper shows. And they try to make a horror movie out of it. When the, the cover, they all look the same. They all have their face on it. Like Dawson's Creek or some shit. And they did that with Halloween H2O and Scream. And these movies, which I was never a fan of. So my number four annoying characters are Julie and Ray together. I know what you did last summer. I still know what you did last summer. Whatever you want to fucking call it. They're bringing back it again, I heard. When the strike ends, probably next year, 2025. Who friggin' knows now? But they did announce that they're doing another one. And they're bringing back Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr. As probably the most boring couple in horror. I'm sorry. Those movies. Yeah, it was great seeing Jennifer Love Hewitt walking around with her, with her, with her tight clothes. I had no problem with that. But as far as character development and just them wow i just didn't care i did not care if she died i don't care if he died freddie prince jr always looks confused to me he always looks like he's he always looks like he's concerned about something there's hardly any movie he's in where all through the movie he just looks like he's happy he's content and even comedies even comedies guys but he always looks like he's got something on his mind he always looks like he's stressed the fuck out i don't know what it is he's not a bad actor he's he's okay but these movies, they're just they're just stupid, repetitive, and um, people are excited that it's coming back. I'm not one of them. I don't care. If it's on Paramount streaming and I come across it, sure, I'll watch it. But I'm not going to my way to watch that crap. I don't, I'm don't. i not a fan of those. And Urban Legend and stuff like that were fine for the time. But it just it, it, it came watered down. Scream did create a lot of horror movies and made it popular again. But they also created a lot of shit, too. A lot of shitty movies. Again, number three, I'm um, kind of cheating here because it's not just one character. I'm putting in the whole cast, pretty much. Pretty much the whole cast. Maybe for the exception of Robert England. Knowing characters, the whole cast, for number three, I'm putting in 
the cast of Freddy vs. Jason. Yep, I'm doing it. Except for Robert Ingla. And I'm, I'm going to include Ken Kersinger as Jason. Not a fan of his Jason in that movie. But it is the least thing that I did like. I mean, the cast is worse. The acting is worse than the actual Jason. He wasn't that bad. I just wasn't a fan of Frankenstein Jason, the way he's walking like that. Like, he's very, 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 very slow. He's got sad, droopy, puppy eyes. I just didn't like his movements. I wasn't a fan of Jason. I didn't like his clothes. I didn't like anything that I saw. His mask was kind of generic. Those are the ones you kind of see in Walgreens, that kind of mask from Jason vs. Freddy. Not into it. But the cast is bad. I, I, from top to bottom. I don't care. Will, the main guy. Uh, Lori, the main girl. Uh, Destiny's child, her friend. The, the overall group. Maybe for the exception of Gib from the beginning. You know, the, one, the actress from Ginger Snaps. She did okay. She was kind of believable. Everybody else was just there. It is the worst cast in Jason. Probably Friday 13th history. And if you want to include it as a Freddy movie, too, it's probably the worst cast in, in Nightmare on Elm Street history. So the whole cast, pretty much, Freddy versus Jason as the most annoying characters. Number three. Uh, number two, I gotta put in Franklin. You gotta put in Franklin from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And you feel guilty every time you do it because he is in a wheelchair. But if he's in a wheelchair and he's acting like that... Man, there were times if I was his sister or just one of those friends in the van... I just would have took that wheelchair, wheeled him into the woods, give him a water bottle, and say, you're on your own, dude. You are on your own. But I get it, Sally. That's that's her brother. <sighs> but Jesus Christ, Franklin, man. If, uh, one of the first annoying protagonists that I've watched in horror movies, because Texas Chainsaw is one of the first ones I watched. You know, it goes up there with Halloween and Friday 13th, but... If you take the, the those characters and Texas Chainsaw and some of the ones from the beginning, like in the 70s, I don't think anybody holds a candle to Franklin as annoying characters. Like a character that you wanted to die and you couldn't wait for it. You know what I mean? He's got to be one of the first. But he's not the number one. But he is my number two. So Franklin, thank you for being annoying. Hot Wheels, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And my number one, my, no, my number one most annoying character and it's not her character in all the movies. It's just her character in this particular movie. The last one. Will we see this character ever, ever again in some form or capacity? I would probably say yes. Maybe not this actress. My number one most annoying character, guys, is Laurie Strode from Halloween Ends. Yep. Now, I think we will someday get Laurie Strode in another way, form, some way. If it's not Jamie Lee Curtis, it's not going to be. But I think we will see Laurie Strode again. I wouldn't doubt it. Halloween is that unoriginal. Horror movies are becoming unoriginal. So we've already had like eight timelines in this movie franchise. So why not add some more? I don't know what they're going to go with it. But guys, Laurie Strode and Halloween ends just irritated me from the jump. From the jump. Because after seeing in, in Kills, when Michael kills uh, Jamie's daughter. Sorry, Laurie's daughter. Karen. I'm thinking, oh shit, all bets are off now. You know, we had crazy Lori in the first one. She was in the hospital all through kill, so she couldn't do much. She was recovering from her injuries. So you're like, okay, oh, you wait to end. She's going to be like crazy Lori times 10 because he killed her daughter. And now he wants revenge, you know, kill Tommy and everybody in that town pretty much. All bets are off, right? Nope. She's just chilling. She's just chilling in her living room like a golden girl eating cheesecake uh, writing in her journal, and she says she's at peace, even though she knows Michael Myers is out there. Now she's at peace. Um, even though she knows he's out there. For years, for 40 years, she, he was in an institution, heavily institutionalized, couldn't get out, but she, but she was still locking up her doors at night, preparing for the worst. But now that he's out there, for four years he's out there, still alive as far as she knows, she doesn't know either way. And now she's at peace. Now she's having cheesecake. Now she's with her boyfriend that we thought was going to be her boyfriend. That's another thing. No character development for him. Hawkins. They're just sitting there talking, getting groceries, talking about cherry blossoms. What happened? What happened to the, what happened to the goal here? What happened to, what happened here? 
I just found her so annoying in that movie. Not Corey. Corey's not the annoying character in this movie, guys. It's not Corey. It's Lori. Lori's the, the, the irritating one for me. So, there you have it, guys. Those are my top 10 most annoying characters in horror movies. I could have had 20 easily, but uh, these are my 10. I would like to hear yours. Please like and subscribe. Stab that notification bell, and I'll see you again soon, guys. All right, take it easy. Mm -hmm.